Alright, so today I'm back with yet another chapter review, and today we will go over chapter 258, which is insane, so be sure to stick to the end because you don't want to miss it. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking, and let's get right into the chapter. However, before that, please double check if you are subscribed to the channel, as you don't want to miss my chapter reviews. While you're already down there, you can always leave a like and a comment, and with that out of the way, let's finally get into it. Alright, so to start off chapter 258, Let's read the text at the top to remember what happened in the last chapter. It says, Isagi ties the game with a spectacular mid-air volley. As he leaves Kaiser and Rin in the dust, the world erupts in amazement as the ball smashes into the back of the net. So we get back to when Isagi scored his unbelievable two-gun volley. Everyone is blown away and the commentators are screaming goal over and over again. We also see the live reaction to Isagi's goal and we then see that everyone is jumping out of their seats to celebrate with our poster boy. Even Isagi's first true fan was shown, and we can see how his eyes absolutely lit up when he saw this goal. Anyway, the commentators call the Isagi goal amazing, and say that he was able to pull off an amazing mid-air direct shot, and with that shot, he also brings back Bastard Munchen into the game as the scores become even. And please just look at Isagi. He is understandably over the moon, and he looks so happy, which just makes me happy as well. However, the players who are everything but happy are both Rin and Kaiser, as we can see here as they burst out screaming out of anger for Isagi. But you know what this panel means. It means that Rin and Kaiser will probably give it their all after this, and try their hardest to ruin everything for Isagi. We also see more of the players' reactions to the goal. Karasu's voice is stuttering, as he wonders what the hell that was, and can't believe that he switched his shooting foot in mid-air, while Tokimitsu just has fear in his eyes, as he calls Isagi a monster. Raichi, on the other hand, is just as ecstatic as Isagi is as he starts screaming. Nanasi looks honestly really scared as he says that Isagi is still evolving. And then we see Shidu, who is the first PXG player, who seems ecstatic over Isagi's goal as he says that it was a fantastic explosion. Anyway, Isagi comes down on the ground and is right away faced with Kunigami, who tells him not to expect any more passes from him. He looks into Isagi's eyes and calls him an overly dependent egoist. However, Isagi feels the same way and says that they should keep devouring each other like always and calls Kunigami the Mr. Fair and Square Stickler, which I don't really get. Or maybe it's supposed to say Striker because I don't even know what a stickler means, but it does sound funny. Suddenly, Isagi, out of nowhere, feels something heavy on his back and it's none other than Hiyori, who comes and jumps up on him. He looks happier than ever as he asks what the hell that shot was and calls it amazing while having a big smile on him. Isagi is happy to see him and says that Hiyori's pass was epic but Hiyori just coldly tells him that of course it was, while they high-five each other. Anyway, Hiyori isn't done, as he asks Isagi how he was able to visualize everything, from Hiyori's alley cross to Kunigami's assist, and lastly, his goal. Isagi has a smug face on him, as he says that he believed that Hiyori would send a perfect pass, and as for Kunigami's assist, he thought that since Kunigami was running up and down the field to contain Shidu, his chances of being in clutch situations were very high. On top of that, Isagi was probably the only one who believed that he would win that duel against Shidu. Hiyori understands and says that it was a combination that only Isagi could pull off, and he asks if he then decided to finish it off with Isagi's ultimate trump card. However, Isagi looks confused before saying that Hiyori is wrong and that he actually didn't plan on scoring that way, which completely takes Hiyori off guard. Isagi says that he saw himself being wide open after he managed to break through their defense and that he definitely didn't expect Rin and Kaiser that close to him. However, it was due to them that he was able to improvise, and the attack that gave Isagi a hint to pull off that move was undoubtedly Nagi's amazing juggling shot. Hiyori remembers it, and says that it was the same one he used against them. Isagi explains that he probably had the image of Nagi's shot stored in his mind, which is why even though he had to improvise after those two killed his options, he was still able to subconsciously recall and recreate it. Hiyori smiles and says that it means that the shot was a combo of Nagi's creativity and Isagi's direct shot. Isagi is a bit more humble and says that he stole it from Nagi, but that it's true and that he wouldn't have been able to pull it off if he hadn't seen Nagi do it firsthand, which helped him create his ambidextrous mid-air quick draw, or as he calls it, his two-gun volley. Hiyori then thinks for a bit and says that his shot was epic and is implying something more, so Isagi asks him what he means. Hiyori explains that no matter which direction a defender comes in to block Isagi's shot, he can then fake them in mid-air and shoot after successfully destroying their timing, not to mention that the goalkeeper is going to have a hard time timing his shot as well. Hiyori looks super excited as he says that if Isagi can recreate that shot consistently, 
he will then become unstoppable. This makes Isagi's brain tick as he thinks that Hyori is right and that this means that he just came up with an incredible weapon now. While he says that he has an immense aura all around him, showing how on fire he currently is. After that, Noah also joins in and compliments Isagi while saying that they will be switching things up in Bastard Munchen because now that the attacks centering around Isagi are succeeding, they are going to lean more towards an Isagi-centric system. And with that, he sends Grimm into the Shadow Realm as he goes out, and Grimm doesn't take this well as he looks destroyed. However, can you guess who will be replacing him? It's none other than my favorite Bastard Munchen player and the Shark Boy himself, Kurona Ranse, who looks ecstatic to be on the pitch again. Isagi thinks that now that Grimm is out, it means that Kaiser only has Ness to support him, which is going to be really tough for him. Just look how crushed Grimm looks as he is walking out. Honestly, he hasn't done anything, but he deserves it. Anyway, Isagi thinks that with his goal just now, he managed to shift the entire team's dynamic, saying that Noah trusts Isagi's goals to lead them to victory, not to mention that now that Corona's in the game, he's going to have a much easier time controlling the game. And Corona comes in and right away tells Isagi that they should go for the second goal and that they can do it. And I'm just so happy to see Corona back on the pitch, as it has been a really long time since the last time he was out here helping Isagi. Isagi thinks that if he scores another goal, he will then be able to crush Kaiser completely, and then Bastard Munchen will firmly become Isagi's team. But that's not all, because if he can manage to score another goal after that and make a hat trick, then he will surpass Rin. And not only that, but also become the best player in the Neo Egoist League. Although this isn't an easy feat, that doesn't matter to Isagi, who says that he can do it, and that he can see it. He can visualize the image of becoming the best player in the world now. Isagi has two guns behind him as he walks with determination. We then zoom into his eyes, which are burning with excitement as he asks them to hurry up and restart the game already. But that's not all, as the text at the bottom says, with the creation of a new weapon, a stronger ego emerges, which you can easily say as it feels like Isagi is on top of the world right now. And the next chapter is going to be called Challenge the Impossible which is something that Isagi is already doing, if I'm honest. Anyway, let's go over it real quick. It was insane to see both Rin and Kaiser so mad about Isagi scoring. However, I definitely get them, as Isagi is both of their rivals, and they also really tried to do everything in their power to stop Isagi, which in the end didn't work out, but it was worth a try at least. Anyway, I love how happy and supportive Hiyori and Isagi are to each other. Just look at this panel. They are genuinely ecstatic for each other, and that they managed to make another wonder goal is insane. Personally, I'm so excited to see Corona play again, and I can't wait for another planet hotline with him and Isagi. And to think that Noah is giving all his trust to Isagi is just amazing. It seems like he is centering the whole team around Isagi now instead of Kaiser, and I can't wait to see what Isagi will do next, now that he's got this incredible confidence in himself. Anyway, yeah, this is just my thoughts on it, and please leave your thoughts and theories down in the comments, as I love reading them. If you like Blue Lock and videos like this, then I would highly suggest you subscribe to this channel. And while you are at it, leave a comment and a like, as it helps out with the algorithm a ton. And if you are curious to see another video of mine, then please watch the video that will be popping up on the screen now. Anyway, thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye.